Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to lecture 63. We are discussing about uh, component matching and testing. So, in last lecture we have discussed about the pumping characteristics for the turbine and that is what will lead to give the information in terms of how do we match the overall engine both in terms of say performance as well as the operating parameters. Then we have discussed about the fixed geometric conversion nozzle and we have look at how our exit that is what will be decided the upstream parameter that in terms of say our expansion ratio of the turbine and that is how we are deciding with the rotational speed of the compressor, power requirement. We also have discussed about the single spool and two spool configuration nozzle matching and we were discussing about say need for variable area nozzle. So, let us move to the next step as we were discussing we have our engine that is what will be incorporated with the afterburner and we have the engine that will be working both when my afterburner is off and when my afterburner is on condition. So, let us try to look at here. So, here in this case if we look at this is uh, representing the turbojet engine rear section where we have say afterburner. So, under that condition upside if we look at that is what is uh, representing when my afterburner is under off condition or the dry condition. So, the amount of air and fuel or amount of flue gas which will be coming out from the nozzle that is what will be given by m dot f plus m dot infinity. Here in this case say this nozzle as we have discussed is mainly been conversion diversion nozzle. So, we will be having this as a throat section, throat section we can say where our Mach number that is what is equal to 0, uh, equal to 1 sorry. Here in this case we have this section 8 it is representing the throat where our Mach number is 1. This afterburner it is off design condition or when it is off it says my area ratio that is what is given by A9 by A8. Suppose if we consider we have our afterburner it is under operation we can say that as a weight condition under that condition also if we look at my amount of gas which will be coming out from the nozzle that will be m dot infinity plus m dot f plus say amount of fuel what we are adding in afterburner. Under that condition also at the throat my Mach number that is what will be equal to 1 and my area that is what will be different. So, we can clearly see the variation of the area. This area we can say it is in terms of A9 by A8. Okay. So, let us try to do the continuity equation, let us try to do the balance for the mass flow rate. If we consider the station 4 that is the entry condition at the turbine or say exit condition of the burner that is what can be represented in terms of say corrected mass flow rate like this. So, that is what is a function of entry mark number at the turbine and we know this entry mark number that is what is equal to 1. Suppose if we consider say our mass flow rate equation at the throat then that is what is given in the similar way under that condition also we know this mark number that is what is equal to 1. Suppose if we consider when my afterburner is on and off for both the conditions my mz8 or say my axial mark number at the throat will be 1. 
So, let us try to put as we have discussed, we can write down this as a formulation. Suppose we consider very first condition when my after burner it is under off condition. So, we can say the mass flow rate at the entry of the turbine it is 1 plus f into m infinity and at the throat it will be 1 plus f into m infinity. So, let us try to put this two as per the continuity equation and here in this case I will say area will be A8 dry. So, when it is unoperational we can say that condition is a dry condition. So, let us try to put that in terms of pressure ratio equation and say the temperature ratio equation. So, this formulation that is what will be changing only in terms of our area ratio. Other parameters if we consider they are constant. Okay. So, it says my pressure ratio divided by my temperature ratio that is what will be the function of say specific heat ratio R specific heat ratio at the throat and my area ratio. So, if we put all together we know our A4 by A8 under dry condition that is what is remains constant. We are not varying this area that means this area will be constant. So, it says my ratio of this pressure and ratio of my temperature that is what will be remains constant under that condition. Now, let us try to look at when we say we have our afterburner under on condition under that condition we will be having the formulation at the throat that will be changing it is 1 plus f plus f a b into m infinity. So, if we will try to put this equation similar way we can write down here under that condition also the ratio that is what is remains constant. So, now let us try to understand what we mean by this. So, under say after burner on and off condition we say we will be having the variation of the mass flow rate at the entry of the nozzle that is what will be happening. Now, the modulation in terms of area change that is what will be based on what is the amount of fuel what we are adding in after burner. So, it says my nozzle exit area. So, if we look at this as our nozzle exit area, this variation it is independent parameter and this need to be calculated or this need to be uh, say selected based on the installation truss of this after burner operation. So, basically if we look at the area ratio under perfect condition or perfect expansion condition when we say our exit pressure equal to atmospheric pressure that is what will be maximizing our nozzle thrust. So, this that basically it is depending on what is the kind of geometry or what flight envelope we are deciding with. So, scheduling or say decision of this area ratio that is what is basically depend on what will be the flight mark number altitude and whether my after burner is operational or, or operational. So, the variation of A8 if we consider that is what is based on whether my after burner is on or off and this A9 that is maximum area that is what will be decided by our engine envelope. Here we need to be very careful if you recall in week 2 we have discussed about the aspects of under expansion and over expansion. So, this 2 that is what will be deciding whether it is permitting or helping us in terms of enhancement of thrust or whether it is increasing our drag. So, that is the reason why this flight envelope that is what is coming into the picture. So, with this we can say this aero engine we say that need to be under chalk condition for most of the time except during say taxing approach or landing condition. During climb operation also we are expecting our nozzle that need to be chalk because we have continuous variation of the say ambient pressure and we are looking for maximum amount of thrust. So, the nozzle setting or say nozzle matching with this turbine with this whole engine that is what is playing important role for even say engine with afterburner. Now, in overall if we look at we have discussed about the single spool configuration for the component matching. 
the logic of this single spool configuration that's what is equally been applicable for the two spool configuration also we have already discussed with the single spool turbo jet engine configuration so you can realize based on this fundamentals we can move forward even for say our mass flow balance between hp spool mass flow balance between lp spool then we need to do the component matching in terms of power and then we need to do the matching in terms of nozzle that's what we already have discussed with say with the limitation of the time we will not be discussing this configuration for say two spool engines similarly this logic what all we have discussed it is for say turbo jet engine the similar logic can be applied here for the turbo fan engine here in this case for turbo fan engine the performance map of the fan that's what is playing very important role okay so maybe for the next course when we will be floating with the new contents that time we will be discussing this configuration very soon so for this course at say ug level at pg level at research level and for say working professional the content what all we have discussed up till now this is what is more than sufficient in terms of understanding the component matching so we will not be discussing say about this turbo fan engine matching we will not be discussing about the turbo prep engine matching and let's move with the next requirement so let's see what all we have discussed in our very first lecture so this course it is aero engine gas turbine cycles so in that we have discussed the requirement that's what will be floated by airline companies that's what we say in terms of mission maybe suppose say if it's a fighter plane then air force will be giving the mission requirement based on that mission requirement very first thing we need to do is thermal cycle analysis and if you recall we have discussed almost all possible engines in terms of turbo jet engine turbo fan engine turbo probe engine we also have discussed about the turbo shaft engine so this cycle analysis that's what will be helping us in terms of configuring our engine now this configuration that's what will not be ended with we are calculating our performance parameters and we need to check whether this performance parameter that's what is meeting with the requirement if so then we will be doing our calculation in terms of weight because we are expecting the application of this engine for aircraft where thrust to weight ratio is very important then we will be checking whether it is meeting with my thrust to weight ratio or not if so then maybe we need to go in terms of scaling the requirement and this is what we will be saying after configuring all these details we will be going at the component level design and this component level design later on we will go with the component testing and that's what will be checking with whether my engine configuration is fulfilling the requirement or not again we need to check with the performance of this components again we need to check with whether we have this engine configuration this is what is sufficient or not and this is what all we have discussed is a preliminary design so if you look at this course this course is mainly been focus on what we mean by mission requirement cycle requirement engine configuration and if you go through the other courses what i have recorded till now that's what is based for say aero dynamic design of compressors and fans very soon in future we will be having course which will be discussing aerodynamic design of the turbines even if time permits we will be having say component like inlet maybe combustion chamber and maybe say nozzle that also we will be discussing in future courses now with this if we move forward with the engine manufacturing company will be doing say manufacture of the engine and later part that's what will be coming is in terms of say engine testing so now we will be discussing about this engine testing what we mean by this engine test because that's what is very important 
when we are talking in terms of verifying what all we have done here and how this whole sequence, whole set, that's what is going on. And if we recall, as we were discussing before, say, 2010, this whole cycle, it was taking around 10 years. Now, with the division and, you know, with the ability of the technology, both in terms of testing, manufacturing, that's what has reduced this cycle to small extent. We will see what we mean by engine testing and you will realize, oh, how challenging this engine design will be. So, later on you will start appreciating the gas turbine community by understanding what all they are doing in terms of design and development activities. So, let us look at, it says, once we are ready with the full scale prototype, we need to have the testing before we are going for say engine production line. So, before doing the full engine testing, as we were discussing, the component level testing need to be carried out. This component level, if we look at compressor, that is what is very important device, you must have realized when we were discussing about say matching of the component. So, compressor testing, that is what will be done on say compressor rigs. Based on that, the performance map that will be created, that is what will be giving the idea in terms of say stall and chalk boundary conditions. We also will be checking with the inflow distortion, how it will be wearing stall and deteriorating the performance of the engine. Once we have all this information, based on this performance maps of compressor performance map of turbine, we will be going with the full engine design and engine testing. So, what we mean by testing? So, this testing they are required for different purposes. So, very first it says during engine design and development activity at the manufacturer level. Second, that is what will be during say engine installation on the aircraft followed by the maintenance of on the wing. Next, that is what is in terms of following overall repair or maybe say inspection in the shop. So, you can say this testing, it is not only at the initial stage, this testing process, that is what is a continuous process. Suppose if you recall, we were discussing these engines, they are having some life cycle, say flying hours. We say 8000 flying hours, 10,000 flying hours. After that, all the components of the engine, they need to be replaced. And when we say we are replacing these components, again we need to check with. And that is where the whole testing, that is what will be coming into the picture. So, when we say MRO, maintenance, repair and operation, they people, they also need to follow these testings. We will see what all are the rules and regulations for that. Now, the key parameters for the testing, they are say engine thrust, mass flow rate, fuel consumption, maybe if we are looking for say control effectiveness, you know what we are discussing in terms of throttling. So, acceleration and deceleration of the engine engine vibration, soft vibration, engine noise, exhaust gas emissions, these all parameters that is what will be coming when we are doing our performance testing. So, let us look at suppose say we want to do the performance testing of the engine, what all we will be doing with. Suppose this is representing say engine that is what is being placed on say test bed. So, just look at this is what is with say thousands of sensors they are acquiring the data when the engine it is under running condition. So, what all informations are required? It says we are looking for steady state or transient pressure that will be done by say low pressure or high frequency pressure transducers. We are looking for say temperatures at different location. So, what all cycle analysis we have done? We say the pressure at the exit of the compressor, temperature at the exit of the compressor, HP compressor, LP compressor, fan, turbine. So, all these devices they are looking for or we need to have the parameters in terms of pressure and temperature. Similarly, we are looking for say soft speed. We are looking for say engine vibration in terms of using say accelerometers. There is a variation of the tip clearance when it is under operation. 
So that can be measured by say capacitive sensors or by optical probes. We also need to calculate what is the amount of air that is what is going inside the engine. That is what can be done by say instrumented bell mount or maybe by using say venturi meter. We are looking for say fuel flow measurement that can be done by different flow meters. We are also interested in what is the amount of truss that is what will be generated by this engine that can be done by using say load cells and at different locations we will be having different different sensors they are being placed with. So actual information about the engine that is what we are acquiring here. Okay? And this is what is a very first requirement for the qualification of the engine. Now we will see what all are the possible testing. So it says we need to do this performance testing under different environment and a different facilities. So here if you look at it says there are group of facilities which are available. One it is say open air ground testing. So here if you look at this is what is been done in open air. Sometimes people they are doing their testing in test cells. That's what is in terms of say internal testing or say that's what is by using say wind tunnel. There are altitude testing facility, ram air facility, icing and bird ingestion facility. We will see all this very soon in terms of doing the performance testing of the engine. Now the question will come what all are the testings that need to be carried out on these engines in order to qualify this. Okay? So for this qualification we are having the regulations. So there are two open literature which are available which are discussing about say regulation for aero engine testing. One it is by EASA it is a European agency. And second, that's what is FAA, that's what is from USA. So they have the standards which are available. So we need to follow the standards for doing the aero engine testing. Okay. So these standards, if we look at, these are on both sides of Pacific, say in Europe as well as in US. There are certain rules regulation even for Russians. Okay. So this if we look at they have small variation in terms of regulation but you know like they are complying with each other in terms of rules formation. Suppose if you are talking about say military engine then for UK Ministry of Defense they have given defense standards. So it says my DEF stand 00971 that need to be followed. This is basically those who are the vendors or the supplier of different components, those who are doing the design and development activities, they also need to follow these standards. Similarly, for the US, they are having a joint service specification guideline. It is updated in 2007. That also is meeting with the compliance requirement. The other governments, they are also having, so they are trying to follow this def defense standards. Some of them they are having their own standard also for the testing purpose. So it is all depend on what is the requirement of this engine, where they will be fitting this with the aircraft and that is what will be deciding the certifications part. So what all are the testings? Oh, just look at. So when we are developing this engine, we have done all our cycle analysis, we have done design of all the components, we have done the fabrication and after that it need to go through all these testings. So if we look at very first that is what is 150 hours approval endurance test, bird strike and ingestion, fan blade off, water and hail ingestion, vibration testing, starting testing including the cold condition handling at the ground and altitude condition, test in the ice forming condition, altitude relightening, performance in terms of say vector or say augmented thrust when we are having afterburner it is incorporated, maximum engine over speed and the temperature, engine emissions. Suppose say we are using twin engines then only one engine when it is under operation that also need to be tested. 
Then we have say initial maintenance inspection, then acceleration simulation, mission and endurance testing. That's what is cyclic endurance. This operability test in terms of say inlet distortion. This is what is very important when we are discussing about the military aircraft when it is going for different weapon firing and you know high speed maneuvers. We need to go with say your thermal and IR signature that also will be coming when we are having say military engines. So, we can say almost around say 14 tests that need to be satisfied in order to certify the engine for commercial aircraft and additionally these two that need to be added with this previous one for the military engines. So, let us try to look at what we mean by 150 hours type of approval endurance test. So, here in this case this is the information which is available in FAA as per the regulation policies. So, whole this is representing the testing time we can say it is around say 360 minutes. So, it is say 6 hours test and here if you look at it says the minimum ground condition, takeoff condition. So, this is representing thrust for say your jet engines or turbofan engines power for we can say it is for a propeller engine or turbo shaft engine and these all are the sequences. So, it says such 25 into 6 that means 150 hours testing need to be done. And what are the requirement just look at it says at least 100 starts must be completed of which 25 must be preceded by at least 2 hours engine shutdown. So, just look at here in this case they are having engine startup, then they are shut down the engine again they are coming. So, it is a cycle that is what they need to follow in terms of variation of the thrust. When suppose if we are considering the bleed that is what has been used we have discussed this in our second week session. So, under that condition it need to be tested with the bleed configuration also. Suppose say here it is been used for say power generation or the generator to be run then that also need to be test for power as well as for the thrust configuration. Suppose if we say for military engine then we need to check with the fuel burning, we need to check with what will be the operation under variable area configuration. So, after completing this 150 hours test this engine will be stripped. The all the part of this engine that will need to be inspected, they need to be cleaned and usually that is what will be available for the review to authorities or maybe for airframers and customers. So, you can say this is what is very crucial test for the engine. Okay. Here if we look at suppose say these are the commercial aircrafts and if we observe carefully these are the flying birds, there are high chances these birds that will get ingest inside the engine when it is under operation. So, when these birds they are going inside the engine that is what will be damaging the engine. Suppose very first if we look at that may lead to affect our say uh, here in this case if we look at this will affect the fan, it will affect the whole engine configurations. Okay. So, let us try to understand how this testing need to be done. So, you know it is not that we have standard birds they are flying, maybe of different size, different weight birds they are going inside. So, the certification agencies they have made the compulsation for testing of the engine at the initial phase only. So, in case of bird ingestion this engine need to work efficiently. So, here it says like there are different kind of testing this it is been done. So, it says say current regulation it says we need to have single sizable flocking bird it will be having weight around 1.85 or 2.5 kg or medium or multiple flocking birds that may be having weight of around 0.7 or 1.15 and this test need to be conducted and this bird need to be ingested at the speed around 103 meter per second. 
once it will be heat to the fan so accordingly it should work in a perfectly operating condition so you know like this operation when it is going on we need to have capture of the details by using the high speed photography now the criteria it says once the birds are fired power lever movement is not permitted within 1 minute and the thrust must not be reduced by 50% for the larger bird or 25% for the medium size bird the test must not result in the hazardous effect and be able to complete the schedule of maneuvers without being shut down so these are the requirements so this requirement it is also a stringent requirement it is also really been specified with both the agencies okay so let's try to look at there are videos available on youtube so this is what is one of the video let's try to look at in terms of one of the unusual but necessary tests they have to do is test against bird strikes when an airplane is up in the sky, it has endless possibilities of running into a flock of birds that can go directly towards the airplane. On a few occasions, a bird can fly directly into the engine of an aircraft, causing huge damage to the engine and forcing the airplane to make an emergency landing or worse. They have to do all kinds of tests that will prevent a bird strike and cause such damage. To ensure that the engines will be safe and continue to operate after a bird strike, Engine manufacturers throw dead birds into the engines while they're on the ground with a so-called chicken gun. They're fired at high speed directly into the running engine to simulate bird strikes as they would happen in the sky. Not only do they use this chicken gun for testing engines, but they also use it to fire birds on the windshield to make sure it's safe and strong enough to withstand birds smacking into it. Today, manufacturers have figured out lots of ways to make sure bird strikes don't cause major damage. Well, except to the bird. Often, a bird can even get completely ingested into the main engine, but it won't interfere with its work or its functionality. While these strikes are not fatal, sometimes they can still create engine failures or even small damage that can lead to further malfunctioning. In 2009, this type of bird strike managed to cause the emergency landing of the U.S. Airways Airbus A320 on the Hudson River. Even though no one was injured in the landing, the flock of birds managed to disable both engines, causing the airplane to land into the Hudson River. So, we can understand the seriousness about bird ingestion. And that's the reason why certification agencies, they are looking for this kind of testing to be qualified or the requirement for the qualification of the engine. Now let's look at the next testing that's what it says in terms of fan blade off and you know like this is also a kind of testing it is compulsory for. Suppose if we consider during operation single compressor or the turbine blade that's what will be coming out. So if that's the scenario under that condition also we need to have this engine to be used in a safe mode and we can have the safe landing of the aircraft okay so in order to carry out this kind of configuration there are a special kind of arrangement that's what has been made in the engine say especially near one of the blade the people they are putting some special kind of material that is acting like an explosive so let engine to rotate at high speed or say actual speed and after some rotation they are giving the explosion to that blade and if that blade it is coming out it should not damage the engine in overall so post blade release the throttle must not be touched for 15 seconds and then engine can be shut down so under that condition also different images they are being taken out and this debris and all other study that need to be carried out. So this is what is very important because in case of failure of this blade from the engine and if it will be coming out from the engine casing it may strike on the fuselage of the aircraft and that may damage the aircraft also. So let's see there is a video which is available for doing this kind of test 
rather having the discussion it will give more clarity if we are seeing or we are looking or visually we will be inspecting with this operation of blade off so here let's see important part of the engine is the blades that rotate at high speeds up to 3000 revolutions per minute causing the engine to reach full thrust and power so it can lift the airplane off the ground and into the sky Obviously, importantly, these blades need to be securely placed into the engine, making sure each one is secure. But what happens if a blade comes out? Well, this is where all the tests come into play. Blade off testing is an air safety test that has one mission in life, and that's to make sure that each blade stays firmly attached in the engine and doesn't have any chance of coming out while the airplane is flying. A blade that comes loose or flies out is one thing that should never happen to an aircraft engine. But since it has previously happened to some engines in the past, they know how to make sure the engine is secure before they even attach it to the airplane. Going at around 3,000 revolutions per minute and having a blade come off could cause so much damage, much more than a bird strike for sure. The blade could come out and hit other moving parts of the engine causing enormous damage, potentially flying through the aircraft fuselage causing safety of flight damage to the aircraft or potentially causing fatal injuries to the passengers on board. So these tests are focused on checking the blades are well fixed in and can't fly out. And in case one would come out, the detached blade or blades shouldn't cause huge damage to the engine and also ensure that the engine will be fully able to function without the blade or blades. In this testing process, a small explosive is attached at the base of one of the blades. As soon as they run the engine, they detonate the explosive to know if the blade will stay inside the engine chamber. If a blade comes out during this testing, then they go back to the drawing board and redesign how to better secure the blades into the engine, and then do all the testing again. One small blade the size of your finger can cause huge damage to the engine and the fuselage and possibly could lead to an unwanted accident or an emergency landing. So, you can understand what all we are discussing at this moment, it is more in terms of testing of the aircraft engines. And we have discussed this three incidents when we are having say 150 hours testing. We have discussed in terms of bird ingestion and we have discussed about the blade off condition. There are many more which we will be discussing in our next lecture. So just enjoy these videos and try to understand how this, how critical and how important this kind of testing that's what is required with. If you look at for your car where you are not having this many testings for the engine, here this engine that's what is the heart of the aircraft if it is not working it is of no use so thank you thank you very much see you in the next lecture